President Paul Kagame has started the commemoration activities by lighting a flame at the Kigali Genocide Memorial. More than 250,000 of the victims are believed to be buried at the site. Let's go live now to Kigali. Al Jazeera's Andrew Simmons is there. So we saw that flame lighting just a few moments ago. Uh, Andrew, what else is due to happen today? Uh, quite a lot, Adrian, as you can imagine. But that torch lighting is symbolic of the very start of a whole process of mourning, uh, of searching within, and also of renewal, of hope, uh, of some degree of questioning uh, what's around it. But the figures involved in the lighting of that uh, remembrance torch are key. Uh, first of all, a group of four people, three men and a, a woman, a young woman, 25 years of age, the next generation, uh, very symbolic, handing a flame, p passing on the flame uh, to Jean-Claude Jun Jean Juncker, uh, the president of the European uh, Commission, and also uh, Moussa uh, Faki uh, Mohamed, uh, the chairperson of the African Union, and also Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda. And then, of course, that torch will be a, fl a flame for a hundred days, a hundred days that saw some of the worst atrocities uh, in modern history. Uh, and at that site where this ceremony took place, there are 250,000 bodies, uh, 250,000 unimaginable to try and absorb that level of loss. And total figure, uh, the UN says uh, more than 800,000. The Rwandan government says it's more than a million. Uh, from here, they'll arrive at the convention centre and start making speeches and we'll be hearing from Paul Kagame. We'll be hearing uh, a lot of questions about the past, uh, a lot of uh, answers for the future, however. The questions of the past are directed mainly uh, at the United Nations for its failure uh, to uh, do anything about uh, the, the whole genocide. Uh, the also uh, questions about the French involvement with uh, the Hutus ahead of what happened, although France denies point blank, it had anything to do with the training uh, of militia who went out to kill. It was a premeditated plot to kill. It was triggered uh, by the shooting down uh, of an aircraft uh, in which uh, the president uh, of Rwanda at that time, the Hutu majority, the president, uh, died along with the Burundi president. And the next day, on April the 7th, the whole massacre, the whole genocide began. Andrew, with so many people murdered, reconciliation must be a, a massive challenge, even 25 years on. What sort of progress has been made uh, as far as reconciliation is concerned? There has been progress. Uh, that it has to be said, how can you start to think out how you integrate, you reintegrate people when so many people have been killed and the killers are living in the community? Now, there was a community-based court system called Gechacha. Uh, there were a, a total of two million cases in all, uh, and the majority of those cases were dealt with with these community-based courts. The, the Human Rights Watch uh, sees some questions about it, but one can't deny that this was a fast process uh, to engage justice uh, on people who ha had engaged in the gen genocide. And there had been a reintegration after that between the perpetrators and the victims. There are villages where the, the two uh, bodies of, of this the awful, two sides of this, this unthinkable uh, situation uh, live together. Now, it isn't by any means complete. It's an ongoing process, but that it is going on. Then you have the International Tribunal, uh, which was in Arusha, Tanzania. Uh, that... Uh, uh, spent 19 years uh, sorting out only less than 100 uh, cases uh, and, and the conviction rate uh, was reasonable, but there are questions still to this day about... There were high-level figures convicted, but the questions still about whether or not that highly expensive, complex international justice system really did do what it should have done and round up some of the other figures. There are still... 1,000 fugitives, at least, according to the Rwandans, who are out there, who need to be caught uh, and need to be put before courts, according to the justice system here in Rwanda. Adrian. Andrew, many thanks indeed. Andrew Simmons reporting live from Kigali. Coming up, we'll continue our co coverage of the uh, solemn anniversary in Rwanda and hear the story of survival and resilience from a man who escaped the genocide when he was just a child.
Also coming up, rival protests in Venezuela. President Nicolas Maduro and opposition leader Juan Guaido rally their supporters. Hello, the big showers have just about gone now throughout Indonesia. There's a good scattering now throughout this whole area from the Philippines back towards Sumatra. And it's Sumatra that's probably the focus in the next day or so of at least potentially fairly heavy showers. But if you're going to, uh, let's say, for example, Java or Bali, yes, it could be cloudy, an occasional shower, but we're out of wet season now, really, so it's a much drier picture than you might expect. That's true throughout Borneo, even Sulawesi, though you can't say it's 